All right, it is Brownlow night, as we mentioned. It is the night of nights, uh, a night earlier this year, of course, uh, because of circumstances with the Queen. Uh, but uh, I, it's, it, it's, I'm really looking forward to it in the sense that I don't know who's going to win it because it might just be a three-way tie, two-way tie, who knows? Could be. There's a lot of players who could win it. I reckon there's at least four, but mainly two. So let's take you through, and this is my Brownlow tracker. I think Connor Rosie in the last eight rounds. So there's a market for last eight rounds. He gets a lot of votes and it culminates in a three in the last game in the showdown. Jeremy Cameron gets a lot of threes. Callum Mills, Bolton, Warner and also Parker. But now let's go to the top six. And I've got Clayton Oliver winning by a vote but as you know that could go either way. Lockie Neal a vote behind. Then you've got Paddy Cripps who, who slowed down in the second half of the year. I think I've been harsh on Brayshaw. Like a lot of ones, a lot of twos. He could get a lot of threes Brayshaw and could blow them away. So that's the one I'm worried about Petrarca and then all Tuke Tuk Miller. I thought had a better year last year, but having a good year last year, didn't get the votes. Do the umpires then notice him more again this year? But it could be a two-way tie between Oliver and Neil, which I wouldn't be surprised. Bernie, Oliver polled 31 votes last year. That was five short of Ollie Wines. Yep. Uh, Petrarca and Gorn took a combined 40 votes off him. Uh, do you see it happening potentially again similarly this year? Because both those players will poll. Petrarca will be very well up there in the first 10 rounds. Second half of the season Petrarca won't vote as well as what he did last year. And I don't think Max Gorn will vote as well as what he did last year as well. He so got 16 Clayton, last year. Clayton Oliver will get a lot of votes. Brayshaw might take a few votes off him. I thought Brayshaw and so too Viney. But even a game like this against Collingwood, he had 43 disposals. He won the Neil Danaher Trophy for best on the ground. I don't think I've ever seen a game where a player wins the award on the ground for best on and then doesn't get the three votes in the Brownlow medal. Mason Cox in that game did get the ten coaches votes. So, up. Damo, who takes the votes off Lockie Neal? Because he's the one that Brownie's got in the top two. Yeah, who, I don't, who do you think takes them I don't off? think anyone takes regular votes off. I know they had a season that was largely in the top four on the, uh, you know, for the whole season. They fell out of the top four come finals. But I don't think there was regular vote getters, uh, Lord, that are going to worry him. So to that point, I think he's in a in a really strong position. McLeggers will get a few. McLeggers get a few. Bailey kicked the six where he might get the best on ground. I think Charlie Cameron gets the best on ground maybe in there. But Lockie Neal with um, like he had 37 one game, didn't kick a goal. Same game McLeggage had 33 and kicked the goal. So and if McLeggage starts to get the three in those games and Neal the two, but Paddy Cripps could have 18 votes after eight rounds. I mean yeah. his first 10 weeks were outstanding. I think the first two rounds, different threes. Third game, he has 31 and kicks one. Doherty has 33. But the umpires were well aware of how well Cripps is going at this point. So after three rounds, he could be nine votes. And the other thing on Lockie Neal is he got sat on by Windhager, won't poll late. And he also got, they got belted by Melbourne in the last game of the year. So he might not poll the last couple of rounds. And Cripps will be whether he can get many late. Oliver might get the three in that last game yeah. against Brisbane. and might come down to that last game of the season. Before we move on to Andrew Brosh, he might poll late. Lord, oh, he was pretty good in those last two games, Cripps, um, Cripps where they yeah. lost. But he was still very good. And that would be contrary controversial given he was uh, only cleared by the appeals tribunal but that man there um lordo you've uh, embraced his talents uh, at an early stage yeah i was able to coach andrew brayshaw and you know, he, he, i think he was second in last year's freo best and fairest he should win it this year and he's got more dynamic and you know, he got voted as the, you know, by his peers as the mvp so uh, he, he'll be top five or six i would have thought but not sure he'll poll enough to win it the six you've got as your one through to six are the six clear cut on most bookmakers' charts, including yep. sports bets. Um, that's the way you see it unfolding, do you? That, that, that it is a very clear cut six. Yeah, the only. I've got three Sydney players in the top 12, I think. So if one of those votes more, like a Cam, uh, Callum Mills votes more than, say, Parker, but Parker's a really good voter. So they're the ones I've spread it even across Sydney Swans. But if one of those gets a lot more votes than you think, then they could be right up there as well. Oh, well, there's uh, a moment of greatness awaiting someone or a few tonight, as we've discussed there, so we'll, uh, we'll find out a little later on.